Welcome everybody. Today is day 177, make it Songbringer. A Zelda-like game. And I'm working this week on the overworld, bringing it to a more interesting level. And I keep on working on more and more uh, better algorithms. So I started this week with Maze version 1. This is that. Here's Maze version 2, a little more interesting. Maze version three is even more interesting, and now I'm working on this is I'm working on I guess Maze version four now. Um, so you can see it's got lakes, two big lakes, some rivers, um, three waterfall areas. There's a seashore, and <clears throat> now I'm gonna work on making it so when it when it creates this overworld, it actually animates it. So this little scene right here that you're seeing. This is actually a screenshot from the game. The game I, I run the game. It gives me this output of showing the world, the overworld created. And uh, so now I want to be able to see it animated for a couple reasons. One, I want to see if it's getting stuck anywhere or looping anywhere. So that should reveal that. Um, so that'll kind of take away some inefficiencies from the whole maze generator. And two, um, I believe I'm going to use this at some point in the game. I might actually do some kind of cool procedural texture or some procedural animation where it, where it actually creates this on the floor, for example. You see some cool maze pattern on the floor or um, or on the wall. You know, this would be really cool. That would be really neat. So, And also, thirdly, I might put this as part of the map. So the actual map in the game, when, you're using, when you use the map and you see where you're at, you can see it colored like this and perhaps even use these kind of paths. I'm not sure whether I'll show this on the map or not. So anyways, let's get to it. I've got some, I'm gonna turn off this right here. This is gonna hide the maze that's currently being shown for the quad, the quad phase of, the, of this. So this is just gonna show the background grid of colors, area types. <clears throat> Good. Okay, so there's that. Now I've got things set up. Let's actually put this all. All this belongs. There. Okay, so now we got these colors and everything. So this is where we're gonna draw one, one little one sixteenth of each area. All right, I'm getting rid of this vec this offset variable. From up here. So I can throw it in there. So we need to be able to get the quadrant from this X2. So we need to actually expose one of these methods from maze called get quad. Yo, what's up, Defend? <clears throat> Working on this new maze generator. Um, I'm making it so it animates all these white lines. So we're going to see this maze being created over time. And uh, that's the goal for today. So I need to be able to get the quad from an X2. Nice, cool. Nice, that sounds good. Be home early. Yeah, yeah, it ought to be fun. And also, not only would it be fun to do, but I can it'd be fun to use. I'm actually excited about where, you know, um, the applications of it all. All right, there we got that. Okay. 
Okay, so now we got the get quad function, which you give it an x2, y2 position, or a quad uh, squared position, and it gives you back <coughs> the quadrant for that. We'll use that in here to get the quadrant. <clears throat> okay, so we need to capture a w and a h in this. This is a basically this is a callback function. I'm using a lambda function, a C plus plus eleven lambda function to as a callback. So each time a different section of the maze is created. So like for example, this tiny little section right there. When that gets created, a callback gets called that 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 shows you shows me what's going on here in this you know what I just realized oh yeah this already has for each dirt okay we need to pass in the maze we've got that we've already got the maze that's good although it hasn't been created yet I hope that's all right Let's capture maze. Yeah, what's up, Azenris? Yep. Grass, trees. These this brown ones are actually mountains right now. But I do want to have an actual section where it's desert, and I think I'm gonna make those yellow. So there's still a lot of the work left to do with this, but this is the grounds, this is the, the foundation for a really kick-ass overworld. I just want to see it animated now so, so I can make sure the algorithm is working correct. And also I might use this in the game, show some kind of animated overworld being created. Size, where does it get this size from? Where does it get the size? Size. Size zero. Oh, this is just straight up. This is just a think. Yeah, it's not even. Okay, so this is also we just go vec to size zero zero. We don't need that as an actual method out there. Same, probably the same thing with anchor. Let's just take anchor out. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like Twitch has had some crazy lag lately. I don't know though. People have been complaining like crazy lately, so I'm thinking I'm thinking it's all Twitch's fault. All right, so we need the X and the Y for this. This is um Alright, so that's the quadrant. Here's the X. Whoops. Here's Y. Okay, so this works. We'll have a maze. Looks like we need our background layer though.
So we need to capture this background. Oh, that's probably it. <laughs> yeah. Runic, yes, I'm standing up. Oh, man. That sucks. Yeah, so basically I was just saying, like, hi and stuff. And, and yeah, this is, you know, what I'm working on and stuff like that. Man, it really sucks you guys are getting that much lag. <clears throat> So I just made that background a pointer rather than a, a reference so I could pass it into this other method easily. Background, background. All right, we need quad color as well. Looks like that's the last thing we need to capture. Yeah, okay, there's a big error because we haven't got maze zero. All right, well. So how far can we put that off? Could probably get rid of this here. Man, this is a chicken and egg problem. Okay, a uh, couple errors and things to fix here. I think that's supposed to be like that. Something's messed up here. Cleaning the build. Okay, so how am I gonna solve this chicken and egg? Okay, so I'm calling a maze callback, which needs some variables, and then I also wanna make sure that the world has created the very first maze. What?
out of here. There we go. Turn the fan on, man. It's hot. Okay, there. Got rid of that warning. Okay, back to the chicken and egg. Hey, what's up, Ethan? Okay, so... I guess... Nice, good for you, Ethan. What's up, Nano? Game's coming great. Yep. I'm working on this um, this new overworld. So this is this is version 3. It's actually the fourth version. This is not version 3. But yeah, so it's come a long ways this week already. It started with this this first maze generator, which was, which was actually really kind of horrible, actually. This was the first pass at it. But then the second one was a lot more interesting. You're getting a lot more dead ends in these. You're getting you're getting more paths that cross a single area. And now I'm working. I worked on this version three. I got this finished last night, where it's even got lakes, two lakes, and it's got secret or you know dead ends guaranteed inside these lakes. It's got a dead end guaranteed at the top of this mountain. And now I'm working on this last one here. This is version four, actually, where. I'm actually going to be animating this to check that it works right and also to be able to animate it in the future. Okay, so either way, uh, the maze has to be gotten first. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna make a background. This is a layer color. Yeah. Nice, man. Cool. Hey, what's up, Betabelle? Welcome back. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the live stream today. Okay, that gets rid of one dependency. Woo, nice. Okay, and then this one we're gonna use indirection of overworld BG. Uh, no, I've been going for a few minutes already. Okay, <clears throat> so that should get rid of that one dependency and that'll allow actually, oh wow, now the build succeeds. Of course it does, we don't, we don't want to be able to, we can't get this maze yet.
So all of these need to be gotten here inside this method. Kind of sucks we have to redo that, but it's okay. And then here we create all this after we create the world. There. Cool. Right on, Ethan. All right. Okay. We're built. We're working again. Let's see if this actually runs. All right, we got something wrong. Because the parent zero. Right, oh man, this is crazy. don't know how big the world is until we've created it and we need it created first to be able to see how big it is. It's such a chicken and egg problem. Um, okay, what to do? How to fix this? You know what? Let's put it as a back as as a child of this for now, that's going to put it in the wrong point, like in the bottom left, but at, the, at the least it'll get it running, or it should. There we go. Okay, let's up the version. And if we simply added a delay, yeah, let's add that delay in. Okay, so the delay is going to be part based on the size of the current array of maze quadrant sections. You can, Black Hat. You can. Give it some time. You just got to keep growing as a programmer and you you get you can do anything. You can do anything. It takes time. But if you want if you want to be a good coder, you can. So we get the size of the current. No, we want to do that before. Yeah, okay, we'll do this afterwards. Add to saved. So this is um overworld maze using a pause of x2 y2 equals address of s and then that gives you the delay. So delay equals like delay per. Let's do Point two seconds times overworld maze dot size, and then we'll run an action on the sprite. So we're gonna do a sequence, create, this is where we do like a fade in. So we're gonna set the um, set opacity to zero. Um, and then we do a fade in, no, a delay time. Delay time, create, and this is the delay I'm talking about. 
and then fade in, create over, say, like a second. So there, that should stagger it all. This will create the maze slowly. Sweet. It's a bit too slow though. Okay, let's see that. Let's see that way faster. Thanks for following. So delay per is gonna be like, I don't know, a tenth of that. Pretty cool to see it, see it actually animating this and how it puts it all together. Okay, so now we really need to get, we've got to get this overworld back to where it was, position in the middle, and then give it some background and stuff like that. Nice, Ethan. Good job, man. Okay, so it needs to be back at the the right position. So that's um. I guess we can manually add that. Or we could just manually set the size. Uh, So this kind of sucks. I basically, all I really need to know is the width and the height of the overworld. But it's a super chicken and egg problem because I, to be able to get that height, I need to create it. And to be able to create it, I need to set the maze gen callback. And so that's, uh, just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hard code in the, I don't really want to do this, but at the size X should be, you know, We don't really need this to be like that anymore. You can just say and capture AW and AH again. And now we should be able to use BG. That'll put it at the right position. Oh, in the direction of BD, BG. Now we need to capture it too.
Dang, now it's just invisible. What's up, Lith? Let's see what happens if I put it back to this. There we go. It's pretty cool that it does this, but it keeps thwarting me and trying to get it to be fixed in the right position. Hey, what's up, Real Red? Howdy, it's been a minute, hope you're doing good. So put that back to BG. In fact, I should be able to see this background. Where are you? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's getting a lot better. So this is um this is the latest rendition. This is what it's supposed to look like. And now I'm just trying to get it to animate. And there's just been some comp some problems I'm having to deal with getting through that. Yeah, uh, I definitely I definitely have a recommendation for how to learn JavaScript. It's a book. It's called um. JavaScript, the good parts, or and if if maybe this if this guy has a, a newer book, I would go with his his stuff. Here's a great talk to watch. If you watch his talk, you kind of get like it's his Google Tech Talk, and he explains kind of his philosophy. So I would totally recommend this video and this book by Douglas Crawford. Shed some good light on it. It really will shatter all, like for me, it shattered all my my preconceptions about JavaScript. You think JavaScript is easy to use, but it's not. It's like wicked hard actually to what to understand what's really going on in JavaScript, at least in my opinion. So I think it's essential. Anybody that's reading, yeah, anybody that's learning JavaScript, I would highly recommend those books or that book in particular. Uh, especially if you already know C, C++, or Python, or anything that if you know any kind of C-based language, you really need to, this is a great book for you because it explains it from that background. You think, oh, in, in C, you know, you declare a variable inside a scope, and that variable is available inside that scope. It's totally different in JavaScript, for example. What's up, Grubuck? Welcome back, man. Day 177. Hello. High five. I'm working on animating this. So this is the newest version of the maze generator. I got this working last night. So for example, you got these dead ends that automatically connect up with the maze. Here's a third dead end. It's just preset there. And so I'm just animating it and I'm trying to get it so it creates this layer color. And for some reason, this layer color is not, oh, well that explains part of it. Let's set this layer color background to be like way red or green or something. What's up, baby? Love you. I think that'll expose whether it's where the heck this is. Nice, man. So you know exactly where we're at here. I, I was working on this yesterday, version 3, and then today this is version 4. All right, I don't, I don't want to break there. Just go ahead. There. We should be seeing a green background. We're not seeing a green background, so once again, let's turn that back on and figure out why the heck. Why the heck, man? Why the heck? Okay, so we got a W it's 26, a H 14. That looks all right. It's background width 416, background height 11, 112. Wind size should be correct. Wind size 420 by 240. Everything's good. So why isn't this working? 
It's a child of this. Oh. The background for the entire screen is covering it up, probably. It returns a new layer color. It's a convenience method which fills out or creates a layer, automatically releases it, adds it to its parent, sets its position, sets its anchor point, does basically everything it needs to do to set up a layer color. There we go. It was just hidden. It was underneath everything. Super cool. I love it. Okay. Um, you can delete that breakpoint now. Yeah, nice, right? It works. It works! Huzzah! The only janky part is this. This is not... This shouldn't be hard-coded. Huh. But I don't know what to do to fix that. But it's super cool that it is working. Okay, so I think it's actually not doing, or it's doing some one thing wrong actually. Those bottom ones, the the very very bottom ones shouldn't have those. Um, lines going through to the bottom so let's turn back on the old version this doesn't like a lot of this now Okay, and I'm going to turn off the animated version. There. Yeah, so this is the the non-animated version. Let's set up a variable so we can swap between the two really easily. So we'll go pool animated equals false or true. So if animated and show quad there, and this one is if not animated there. Even though we're actually reusing, accidentally reusing some code here, it's not good, but it doesn't matter. I'm gonna really, I'm gonna remove those bottom ones anyways after after a minute. So we need to be a little smarter in the maze. very bottom of the maze does this generate overworld pre oh, it's 
No, I think it's here. Oh, that's going to still allow that to work. Think that dang it, still didn't work. It's, I know it's to the south. There we go. Cool. Let's see if that works if I turn that down. Um, and set the delay per outside. And oh, so we can just like speed it up a little bit, and that'll be twice as fast. Okay, so it needs that, it needs both those inside the maze, both these guards. Cool. All right, there we go. Working on version four. Got it animated now. That's awesome. All right, cool. So this is good enough to check in and I can move on to the next task for today, which will be, let's see, I'll probably start working on the actual world. What's up, Pema?
Oh, huzzah. I thought you were saying huzzah the whole time, but huzzah is your actual name? Cool, Lith. That's awesome. That's a sweet name. Is it pronounced huzzah? Oh wow. What's it mean? All right, this is cool for for the first time in like 3 days I'm actually turning off the overworld scene and running the game. Whoa. Yeah, uh <clears throat> King nothing. Yeah, there is a path a path out of the Um, see that there is one little corner that's, that looks like it's messed up, but it's actually okay. It's intentional. I meant to do it that way for the home screen. Lion. Whoa, cool. It means lion. That's awesome. You have a cool name. Okay, so yeah, let's now this is working. Let's get um let's get back into the overworld and start applying the this new maze to the world, making the world more interesting in the process. So here's like obvious flaw. Right? So we want we have two Where should I start? Because there's gonna be so there's gonna be so many bugs. Let's just run around for a second and look at the overworld. Let's go to somewhere we know is supposed to be a certain pattern. Like this one. I know he's so fast, he's in god mode. <laughs> Yeah, he's in God mode, so he can run really fast and go through the walls. So this this one, what's this green? This is one above. So yeah, this is a dead end. Okay, so this one's right. This one has a dead end with the screen coming in from the top, or from the path coming in from the top. This one is also sort of a dead end. This screen right here has a path. Okay, yeah, so that's the thing. We need to make all these paths fill things in more and more often. Hey, what's up, Zed Epsilon? Welcome to the stream. <laughs> yeah. Who's Sanic? You guys are talking about Sanic. Nice, you've been making a GUI library for XNA? That's awesome, man. I've been working on this overworld lately, so this is what I've been working on, making the, a more interesting overworld. What's up, PC, Mr. Tim? Really? <laughs> Machine player. Yeah, this whole map picture thing is new, yes. So I'm, I'm taking this, this is a generated map, right, from, from the game, and I'm actually going and now creating the, the, each screen. So each one of these is an area of this, of the map, and I want it to fill in the right tiles based on the path that's going through here. Nice, you getting ready for your freshman year at college or high school? Wow, really? <laughs> so I'm going to start with patterns. 
In fact, I'm going to go through to pattern connector and I'm going to fill the entire screen with rocks. High school, cool. <laughs> Okay, so this is going to overwrite everything with rocks and all these connectors, and so it'll be relying entirely on the set openings method, which um, which will create the paths. Right, so we're getting some of these paths to work. Some of these are not working, for example, that one. But this one works. That's a really interesting, that's a pretty interesting level right there, or area. We've got one path going through right here. This little path here in the bottom left would be a very cool place to put some kind of secret or goodie or treasure chest or level entrance or something cool. As you can see, you can get you can get to it from over here. Same thing here, we got a nice ending right there. Or no, that's not an ending, that's... Yeah, this is getting way more interesting. Come on, I've never heard of this guy. I'm so ignorant sometimes. Oh, it is like Sonic. <laughs> yes, Crocodile Octopus. This is a procedurally generated Zelda like game. Cool, I gotta check this out later and, and learn more about Sanic. Yeah, right, yeah. That might be a cool thing, actually, to have bombs that can remove certain types of mountain tiles, for sure. Yes, oh, absolutely, please, link, link all you want. <laughs> Ear rape. <laughs> Did I get, I had my sound off, right? Okay, so we need to work on the set openings function. <laughs> yeah. This is what I'll check out later. Yeah, so I, um, I sometimes I don't like actually play videos while I'm streaming because I get my video flagged for copyright infringement so that's why I can't watch something so I'll save it and I'll watch it later though okay I'll, I'll remember that I'll remember to turn my volume down for that one cool good to know very good to know there's there's a couple things out there you just do not want to hear very loud Oh yeah, I'm remembering this code now. This code can be so much more optimized. Every single one of these could be a function and it's gonna make all this way smaller. Um, but anyways, if I turn off all these additions, Actually, that one's okay. It's really just this one right here. The offset. If that offset becomes zero, I think it'll work. <laughs> I feel so enlightened. <laughs> awesome. I need some enlightenment.
All right, so this one, there's one little bit that's messed up. I don't know how that, wait, this is the right to the top right of the home screen. So that would be this. Oh, I see what's going on. Okay. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> okay, so we need to turn off the center if we don't have a connection. One sec, I gotta get some water, I'm super thirsty. Oh man, it's so hot today. Okay, so this one right here, east. If the quadrant is southeast, and we need to check if the quad is open. There, that, sh that should do it, or we need it, we might not, uh, huh. Yeah, okay, it worked here. You put that path at the bottom, actually you just put a path at the top too though. So I guess this needs to be every single one of these. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do to simplify all of this is get, like I know I want that. But, it's super annoying to have to type that all the time. So many different ways and I got these new methods which deal with quadrants so I don't need all of this. Okay, this is not that hard to write actually. So, direction is west. That's one. Southwest is also one. Okay, so if Q equals quadrant D and maze is quad open, so we're talking about quadrant northwest. D plus one, maybe. Let's check that. Quadrant southwest, northwest. Yeah, that's D plus one. D 
plus 1, d center equals true. <laughs> yeah, Zed, this is C++, man. Yep, C++. Yep. Okay, um, once again, quadrant southeast. This one is quadrant D, I think it's D minus one. So we got, um, right, the direction's west, which is one, and we want to go southeast, which is zero. Yeah, so that's D minus one. And this quad open northeast, once again, that is, uh, that's plus two. Okay, now quadrant northwest. It's plus one. And southwest. I believe that's just quadrant D. Yeah, quadrant D. Okay, so now we got this all. Um, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. It's a sexy memory monster. Yeah, good for you, man. Good for you. I know what you mean when they're they're looking pretty similar. They are. They are in a sense similar. Java, C, C plus plus. Um, there's a lot of languages that are C based, right? Their syntax kind of came from C and so <clears throat> that's where they're all kind of looks at kind of similar oh we need this is southwest oh did I mess that up yeah here's quadrant D and that's D okay so this should work I should be able to delete this now and comment all this stuff out and it should work exactly the same. Yes, Java is influenced by C. Pema's like, go for C sharp, go for C sharp. All right, looks like we. Might have messed it all up. Well, wait. Uh, yeah, some of this is not working. Okay. I need to figure out what I messed up. So this is what I want it to become. I'm going to undo all my recent changes here. Right, it's a big crow. It's more like a raven, but I've always called it a crow too. Okay, so if I comment this back out and go back to this old code, it should work again. Maybe it's a baby on this planet. <laughs> or on that planet, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Could be just a baby crow, it's a tiny crow. Okay, we're back to how we were. Yeah, okay. That's confirmed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is set a breakpoint when it gets to here and see if all of that logic works out to be what it should be.
It is. It's all fantasy. Fantasy sci-fi. Okay, so let's hit that break point. The bat from Adventure? I never played Adventure. I heard it was good though. Secret boss, giant raven. In a nest. Ooh, you have to climb up the nest first. <laughs> it's the crow planet. Oh, oh, oh. Cap of Pride. All right, we got quadrant. All right, what should this be? What what direction is this? D is west. Okay, so we're mimicking this one. So if Q southeast equals quadrant D, let's step in. Hello, Nijifrak. Hello. Welcome to the stream. All right, I don't know what these variables are coming out to be, so I'm just going to do this. The easy to debug way, auto Q zero equals quadrant D. What's up, Xbox Taco? We'll do Q one quadrant D plus one. Q two. Quadrant D plus two. <laughs> oh, it's safe to play? Oh, cool. Nice. That was so awesome. Oh. Where are they? Who are these guys? It's so funny. <laughs> That's so awesome. Oh, I gotta save that. Share it with somebody. It's so good. Thank you for that link. Nano. That was awesome. That changed my world. That moved me. Okay, let's hit this break point again. <laughs> uh, to anybody that's just watching, of course, it's a it's a, a matter of opinion, right? You know, you can use Java; it's cool. It's a great language. Same with C sharp. There's a lot of other good languages out there too. But uh, yeah, that's a funny, funny video for sure. <laughs> Touch the hearts of us all. We'll, all, we'll never be the same. We'll never be the same. <clears throat> Q0. Okay, what is this coming out to be? We got direction is west, right? D west. Q0 is southwest. That should match up with that right there. Q1 is northwest. Should match there. Oh, it's a D minus one. Oh, oh, oh. I need a D minus one. Q1 
yes. Look at this. I love this whole 10 seconds has gone by, nothing happens. Was that, was that was it loading? Look at that. Oh, this reminds me of ZZT. Dude, this does look like a pretty good adventure game, right? What is he? He's moving an arrow sign. Take that, green thing. I'm getting you with the arrow. <laughs> wow. I, back in the day, I imagine this was probably dope. This was like the best adventure game you could play. Oh, dead end. This is great. Does it get really interesting? He's back at the castle again. He's fighting the same guys in the same area again. Oh, wait, different guy. What, you have a ma massive chalice. Oh! Everything's flickering. <laughs> Man, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Right back in the day? Can't believe I'm still going. What you mean? What's up, Big Mac? Okay, so we need a D minus one here, or a Q minus one. Or plus three. Actually, this probably should be plus three. Okay, so I'll call that Q three, not Q D minus one. Q three. Quadrant D plus three. Let's put a plus three there. This might actually work if I just put that plus three in. No, no, uh, no, I didn't start three hours ago. Not today, I don't think. Yeah, only an hour and 15 ago. Yep. Okay, let's see if that works. No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, it didn't didn't do it. Something's wrong. <laughs> right? It does explain a lot. Okay, I guess I got to say this breakpoint. The one I'm looking at is actually east. If anybody happens to see where I'm wrong in this code, please just tell me. Yep. Northwest. Southeast. Northeast.
northwest southwest yeah well that looks fine unless I change it all for east right I know it is kind of tricky when I when everything gets this dense right it's getting dense for sure um, I know that's why I'm that's why I'm moving very slowly with this. It's so dense that it's like, okay, does this actually match that? If I do, if I abstract it away into quadrants like that, I don't know. Okay, let's let's see though. Okay, we're at west, right? D equals west. Q zero should be southwest. Yeah. Okay, let's make this let's make this even clearer. We'll call that Q zero. So oh What's up, McMonkey Ninja? I look exhausted, huh? Well, I feel good today actually. Quadrant D plus one. We'll call that Q one. Here's Q3, Q1, Q2. Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, uh-huh, there is. Do not do whatever you want, but give credit is essentially, I think it's the um you're talking about GNU, the GNU GPL. Uh, Lith, no, I'm not using, not at all using a scripting language. The reason I'm not is because I don't trust them. I could, um, both Coco Studio X, or Coco Studio X has both JavaScript and um, and Lua, and I don't want to use either of them because I just don't trust it because it crashes and stuff. So I use pure C++. I think that's kind of what you want. There's also the, the yeah, that's basically it. Because there's the MIT license as well, but the MIT license does not say you have to give credit. GPL, you do actually have to give credit, but it's kind of different like because I think they have make you have to... Um, um, you have to publish GPL means that you have to publish your software using GPL the GPL license as well so it's kind of restrictive so you might have to actually Pema you might really want to look around at that and see what you start here with the, the with the GPL but there might be a better one for your situation what's up little strapper <laughs> Little strapper, welcome to the stream. Okay, now that we got those quadrants like that, should be a little easier to read when we're when we're going through this. So now, once again, we should be west. Yes, we got direction west. We got quadrants Q zero southwest, right? Q one is northwest. Correct. 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 Okay, Q2 is northeast. Should be northeast, yeah. Q3 is southeast. Southeast. Okay, that's entirely matching that. So let's run it again and see if we can get east. There, we got K to east. All right, good. Now this one, let's check this one out and see if it matches too. So we got direction is east. Quadrant zero should be southeast. Ah, here's the problem. So it is a totally different direction. Oh man.
Yeah, the short. No, the squadrons Shard should not be using just Q. They want to be use. I want to be using Q zero one two three. So yeah, it looks like east is completely different in how it adds to the math of the quadrant to create final quadrant. So all right, so Q zero. Oh, I see cuz they're they're flipped. Oh, that's right. I forgot east. See, I've got east is 2 1 and west is 1 2. North is 1 2. South is 2 1. So, this needs to be flipped. Gladiar, what's up, man? I'm not rushing myself? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. That's nice. Don't rush. Take your time. Take your time. Yeah, so we need to be able to swap. Um, so really, the code should go something like this. If direction is K east or direction equals K north, then we're going to swap a couple of these. Um, I think, let's see, Q0 should be southeast. So we need to swap 1 and 0. Yeah, all right, and now we get these straight, I think so that we would have yeah northeast would be q1 q1 would be the q oh my gosh this is so confusing it's confusing me what's up cat pinch yay good moment right all right, I think Q2 and Q3 should probably be swapped as well. Q2, uh, Northwest, yeah, they should be swapped. Let's try it out with just swapping them. All right, so the first one should be correct. We've got direction west. We've still got southwest, northwest, southwest, northwest. Yeah, those are correct. Okay, let's run it one more time. We'll get back to this other one. Okay, we've got direction east now. And let's see if our quadrants match up this time. Q zero southeast. Yeah, all right, that's correct. Quadrant one northeast, correct. Quadrant two northwest, that's the only right here. Yeah, correct. Quadrant three southwest, correct. Northeast, quadrant one, correct. Southeast, quadrant zero, yay! I think it's working. I think it's working. I basically just condensed all those lines of code into that code. And then that's going to make it a little bit easier. So this, I can make this more function-like procedural. Yay, cool. Now we got this opening right here again. And yeah, we've got that opening right there. It connects right, but it doesn't connect right right here. That connection works. Okay, cool. So let's, let's add on this last little fix I did about half an hour ago where I did this this line
Okay, all right. Southeast in the K West is Q3. North, the direction is west to get north out of west we just add one okay so that's dir d plus one That's going to be wrong, though. It's totally going to be wrong for some directions. So cool. OK, even though it's going to be wrong. Wow. Well, uh, if, if I run this, it's just going to be wrong. So I think it's supposed to be D plus three. So for getting east, for example, the direction east Yeah, west we wanted to measure Man, I don't even know. Lost. I'm lost in my own code. My intuition says that D1 will work, but who knows? We'll know right away if this area to the left of this home. We go up here. Oh. Oh, no. So the east didn't work, but the west did. Okay, yeah, and that's, that's to be expected because west, the D was correct. So east, if we're, if we're, uh, no, wait, w wait. West was wrong, east was correct? Yeah, oh no, west is correct, east is wrong. I didn't, and I thought I didn't have trouble mixing up east and west before all of this madness. Okay, so if we're going east, we need to check. We need to check the south east corner going north. East plus three is going to be north. Should be right. Quadrant three is actually quadrant two, which is east.
Uh, I think this is actually needs to be a different quadrant. So, oh uh, man, this is so hard to conceptualize all this for some reason. Quadrant D plus four or plus three. And then this one is Q4 equals dir. Hold on, west was one plus three was south east. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. East, however. Right? Yeah, that's how I feel right now. Nice. WDFPL. <laughs> there you go. Nice. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wonder if anybody's actually used that. Okay, so if, uh, man, if we're going east, then we got, we want to end up with the south east quadrant which would be plus two yes and then move that to q4 Whew, if this works i don't i want under, i don't understand how the heck this is working but jeez i wish there was an easier way to to either visualize this or just, I don't know, forget about it. One of the two. Ah, uh, it didn't work. Damn you. All right, let's turn this back on. Man, it feels like, I feel like I've been doing this kind of code lately. A lot of this kind of code, which is super, super deep. Not very visual, it's just very, very heady stuff. I'd rather be doing some more art. So I think probably tomorrow I'll get into just doing art. Lay lay down this code, let it rest for a second. Okay, we've got west. We know that works. We got east now. Quadrant Q, southeast. Q0, southeast. Okay. Yeah, double click. Uh, I've never done that before. Cool. Thanks, man. Double click to whole word select. Okay. Um, well, we want, we want to check if we're going east, quadrant southeast. We want to go. We want to check the south east quadrant. So Q4 should be southeast. And it's not, it's southwest. Well, there's part of the problem. Okay, so right, Q4.
The direction east is three, northeast, add one to get southeast. So that's, I think it should be Q, D plus one. Oh, oh, okay. What's up? Welcome to the stream, Fat Guy925. Alright, um, there's. We're back to the east. We got. Their east. Yeah. Okay, um. Q4 should be southeast. D1 should be north. Okay, from to my knowledge, this is right. Let's see if that works. If this works, we'll see the path from the, the left area or the west area continue on into this area. Yay, that worked. But it looks like it broke the north one. My god, these custom cases. Uh, yeah, I gotta take a break. My brain is fried. I can't even think anymore. It's Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. There's gotta be an easier way than doing this Q4 thing. So for right now, I what I'm what I've not, what I've got I've gathered here is that north and south have even more custom logic, which sucks. I did all this to make sure there wasn't any custom logic, and then all of a sudden this extra little line of code right here to get that working is causing all this pandemonium. So I'm going to take a break. And what typically happens when I take a break is that I'll come up with a better, simpler idea that won't require all this confusing nonsense. So that's what I'm working for. <laughs> right, beerware? That's a cool one. <laughs> I know, very way too many cues, right? Woo! Yeah, fat guy. This could be that yeah, could be an array, but that's just not what it what I need to do there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There's got to be a design flaw. That's what this is. There's a design flaw in all this, and that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna take a break here. I'm gonna go get some dinner, relax a bit, and I'll come back to this and go. Oh, I'll think of some cool idea which will simplify this, and I won't have this custom logic anymore. All right, so yeah, it's been a good day. God, I had fun chatting with you guys. Let's see the maze generator one more time. You guys can see uh, what we're, anybody that's just joined the stream, you can see what we were doing earlier. Yeah, I like that. I like that right there, fat guy. That's some good advice. So here's the maze generator. This is World Wizard. So, this game is called Songbringer, if anybody's just joining. It's a game like Zelda 1, but it's procedurally generated. So this is it procedurally generating an overworld. And all these little white lines are where it puts the paths that you can walk on. And so you can see that each area is part of the grid there. So the grid is, each one of the parts of the grid is an area. And so you can see that each area has 16 different paths that can be walked on inside that area. So it creates, this is going to create a much more interesting world than what it used to be. Um, so yeah, my goal tonight will be to um, to yeah to continue working on getting this world actually turned into tiles, into an actual playable world. Yeah, I know it's been right. It's been crazy. <laughs> there you go. Right. So yeah, um, that's it. Tonight I'll be working more on that this algorithm, getting this, turning this into an actual overworld, playable screens and all that. And then tomorrow I'll be back. I don't know what I'll be working on tomorrow. Maybe art. I need to really get back into some, make it some art because I'm just, 
I'm coded out. I've done too much code lately, it seems like. So, yeah. So that's it, you guys. That's, thanks for watching. Had some good laughs today, and you guys taught me some cool stuff like Sanic. So, yeah. Thanks. Thanks again.